Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to our video on Section 4, Chapter 11, entitled Phase Changes. Today, we're going to look at our states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, and how we transition between them via phase changes. Our example we're going to use today is a heating curve of water. So we're going to look at how states of matter go through phase changes and how that relates to enthalpy changes. So we are going back to heats. Now, our example is going to be water. So a heating curve of water involves an axis of an axis of temperature versus an axis of energy being added. So we're going to look at the journey of H2O from its solid ice phase to the gaseous steam phase. Now, solid ice is heated up, and this slanted line here represents an increase in temperature, a delta T. So as solid ice is heated up, it starts to warm up. Particles begin to vibrate. We get to zero degrees Celsius. At that point, that is the melting point of ice at standard temperature or standard pressure. Excuse me. At that point, it goes through a process called fusion. We call that melting. So it goes through fusion. As you notice, this line here no longer increases. It goes straight. So it's a plateau. So during fusion, during melting, the temperature stays at zero degrees Celsius because the energy is not being used to increase the temperature. Rather, it's being used to Break, the, break some intermolecular forces between these solid ice particles. Two, change it into liquid water. So from this point to this point at zero degrees Celsius, we have an ice water mixture. Once we get to this point here, we have all liquid. That liquid begins to heat up. Once it gets to 100 degrees Celsius, it starts to vaporize and go through the vaporization process. We call that boiling. So this is the boiling point of water at standard pressure. So through this vaporization process, more intermolecular forces are breaking until all intermolecular forces are broken and H2O molecules are independent of one another and they are released as steam, water vapor, or in the gas phase. This is called vaporization. The opposite process from gas to a liquid, that's condensation, and from liquid to a solid, that's solidification. Now the process from a solid up to a gas is called sublimation. That is an example of that would be carbon dioxide solid going to carbon dioxide gas. That's dry ice if you've seen that before. And from a gas to a solid, that's called deposition. An example of that would be water vapor in the air during the winter turns into a snowflake instantly without going through the water phase. Now, going from a solid to a gas is an endothermic process. It requires energy going from gas down to the solid direction is exothermic. You have to release energy for that. Speaking of energy, these changes in temperature and these phase changes require energy for them to take place. These phase changes, for example, fusion, requires a specific amount of energy per mole. It's called the heat of fusion. So it requires 6.01 kilojoules per mole in order for, well, 6.01 kilojoules in order for one mole of ice to melt. We call that delta H sub FUS, the enthalpy of fusion or the heat of fusion. It will just be the opposite number. You have to lose 6.01 kilojoules for every mole to solidify. So it will be negative 6.01 kilojoules per mole. For vaporization, it also requires a certain amount of energy, 40.67 kilojoules for every one mole of liquid water to vaporize into gaseous steam. We call this the heat of vaporization, or delta H VAP, V-A-P. Sublimation is just a combination of both of these. You add these up and get approximately 47 kilojoules per mole to get the enthalpy of sublimation. So I just round it off there. Now we can quantitatively calculate how much energy a substance must gain or release in order to change states, meaning increase in temperature, and go through a phase change. So as we look at these enthalpy changes, we have to keep in mind that we analyze the slopes and the plateaus differently quantitatively. So my slopes are going to be governed by Q equals MC delta T. Why? Because here we have a temperature change. And we can calculate the heat of temperature changes using Q equals MCAT. But on the plateaus, we're going to have our heat being equal to the number of particles, the number of moles there, times 
a constant, the heat of fusion, heat of vaporization, heat of sublimation, whatever it may be, whatever process you're talking about. It's important to keep in mind that Q equals big Q, which equals H. They're going to be used synonymously and interchangeably during this chapter. So let's look at an example. It says, what is the change in enthalpy when 1.00 moles of ice at negative 25 degrees Celsius turns into steam at 125 degrees Celsius under constant pressure. Now it's important to note here that our specific heat capacities of ice, water, and steam are different from one another. We learned that the specific heat capacity of water is 4.184 joules per gram Kelvin. We learned that before. Now, ice's specific heat is going to be lower than that. And that should make sense because ice will melt um, more easily than water will heat up. So ice is at 2.03 joules per gram Kelvin. And steam heats up even better. It's 1.84 joules per gram Kelvin. Now here's a snapshot of our problem here. We have ice at negative 25 degrees, and we want to see, well, how much energy is it going to gain in its journey to get up to 125 degrees? But we know in that process, if you go from negative 25 to 125, not only are you gaining energy um, via the temperature change that's shown, but you're also going through phase changes. So we have to account for both of those processes uh, quantitatively here. And we have to deal with all of them separately. So we have first have to go from negative 25 to 0, calculate that enthalpy change, and then go through my fusion phase change and that enthalpy change, and then go up from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius of water, that enthalpy, that enthalpy change with that temperature change, and then through vaporization here at 100 degrees from water to steam, that phase change, and then from 100 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius, that temperature change and enthalpy associated with that. So we're going to go through all of those steps, five-step process. So first things first, we're going to go from negative 25 to zero degrees. Now, instead of putting Q equals MCAT, I'm going to put delta H because we know they're synonymous. So this is the first step here for this part there. I don't have a mass, but I can find it. I know I have 1.00 moles and my molar mass of H2O is 18.02 grams per mole. Moles cancel. That's my M. My C for ice here, because I'm, I'm at negative 25 here. I'm starting here. Ice is at 2.03 joules per gram Kelvin. And my change in temperature needs to be in Kelvin because this is in Kelvin, but we know Kelvin and Celsius are interchangeable. Just change the unit, really. So from negative 25 to 0, we have T final minus T initial is going to give us a positive 25 Kelvin, which gives us, I'm going to change it to kilojoules just to save some time here, 0 0.91 kilojoules. This is the heat associated with taking ice from negative 25 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius. Now I have to go through my phase change, fusion. To do that, I use this equation the amount of ice that's going to be going through fusion times my heat of fusion. So I have one mole times my heat of fusion, which is 6.01 kilojoules per mole. And voila, that's it. So it takes 6.01 kilojoules to take one mole of ice and turn it into liquid water. Now I have to take water from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius to figure out how much heat that's going to need, or how much heat we're going to need to do that. I use MCAT for that temperature change. So the same process as above with one minor difference. I figure out how much mass I have using that. Now I have to use a different specific heat. I'm not dealing with ice anymore, I'm dealing with water. So it's 4.184 joules per gram Kelvin. My temperature change is from 0 to 100 degrees. So T final minus T initial is just 100. And now I simplify. Once I simplify, it's 7.53 kilojoules. Now, 
I've just gone through this process. It takes 7.53 kilojoules to go from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius in the water phase. Now, I want to see <clears throat> how much energy is associated with water going from the liquid state to this gaseous state. So delta H of vaporization is needed. So I have one mole of liquid water multiplied times by constant delta H of vaporization for water in this 40.67 kilojoules per mole. We have an easy number in that we have only one mole of our substance. Oh, that shouldn't be bad. Equals 40.67 kilojoules. So it takes 40.67 kilojoules to take one mole of water and turn it into steam. And now we want to know, well, how much energy is associated with taking that one mole of steam from 100 degrees to 125 degrees? So lastly, we use our MCAT equation. We want to figure out how many uh, grams. Now our specific heat capacity is going to change to 1.84. And our temperature change is now 25 Kelvin. We do that, we should get 0 0.8 to 8 kilojoules, I believe. And those are all the heats of this process. Now we simply add them all up. And the overall delta H is 56.0 kilojoules, just around that, that mark there. Gentlemen, please take notes on this. Keep track of this. Welcome back to Enthalpies in terms of phase changes. Adios.